you're not, help us at hand in the form of your friendly human is celebrant. <laughs> you can help me create an unforgettable wedding ceremony that tells your love story your way and keep you on the right track with all the legal admin. Independent human is ceremonies here this weekend on stand 416B have a diverse team of celebrants dedicated to delivering personalised, thoughtful and unique wedding ceremonies of all kinds throughout Scotland. Nonny here has conducted private ceremonies across the country since 2006. More than a thousand now, more than a thousand. Wow. Yeah. And has become known for helping couples to design a highly personal and <laughs> professional ceremony that's reflected in them, tapping into his many years of experience as a manager and speech writer. Nonny, over, you, over to you. Thank you. That's what we need to know. Thank you. Can you hear me okay there? Yeah, absolutely. Welcome. My name is Natch. I've just been saying. Now, I'm a celebrant with the oh, oh, I'm too close to that, am I? I'm a celebrant with independent human ceremonies, and as I just mentioned, I've done more than a thousand ceremonies. It's fabulous, girls. You can literally do what you want. Now, believe it or not, you've only got to do two things to be legally married in Scotland, okay? Turning up's not one of them. If you don't turn up, then you don't get married. But if you decide to turn up, because they're going to marry each other, and then you're going to sign a piece of paper. What we do at independent human ceremonies is throw everything up in the air. We can meet you in your home, we can meet you in a cafe, we can meet you in a pub, wherever you decide to meet up. No obligations, because only when you meet the person and you're comfortable and happy, that's the person you want to do your wedding, that's when you can maybe book them up. Total cost of this thing, we'll get out of the road, first of all, is £425. There might be some travel, but that's negotiated with, 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 with the, the celebrant. Four twenty five. how it's broken down, it's only when you're happy and you're comfortable, that's the person that you want to do your wedding, because it's so, so important. You're going to build a relationship with that individual. That individual is going to take that forward right through your wedding day. They're going to be contactable, whether you want to talk about something. It could be legal. It could be just, are you wearing a kilt on the day? That could be just as simple as that. But they're contactable for you to talk to them as much as you want on that thing. Put down when you're happy. 80 quid, that secures a date. The balance doesn't fall payable until... 28 days before the wedding. Now, if that's 2024, 2025, it's the same cost. Okay, that's out of the road. Let's get back to the wedding. What I tend to do in couples is, particularly the bride, because usually it's the bride that makes the decision. She's the one that usually comes up with whatever you want to do. The guy usually tags along, although you do occasionally get somebody that really does get involved. But it's really the bride that really does start to get you involved in the thing. So we're going to talk you through stuff. I would start off at the top there, this relationship you've got with the person. Put formal on the top there, okay? And stick informal on the bottom. Put practical over there and put romantic over there. You're in that box somewhere. And what we want to do is have a chat and discuss with you and find out what makes the two of you tick, what you like about each other, maybe what you don't as well, because this is going to be a very personal ceremony that's loaded to the two of you to make sure you will know, though, exactly what's happening. You will know exactly what's coming because you're in total control of the content, you're in total control of the structure. You will decide, now you might look surprised when something comes up, but you know it's coming. So it's your ceremony that we're going to try and mould. So everything goes on. Have, have you been to a human ceremony before? So you'll know the structure of the thing. Have, did they do any hymn symbolic gestures at all? Because the Celtic world, I'm a Welshman. Now the Welsh, the Scots, the Irish, it's awash with symbolisms. There's all sorts of things. It predates any kind of religion. Because what happened was families were linking together. They got these families together. And they had to, in some way, recognise that. Now, Scotland, for instance, is tying the knot. And we maybe we'll do that in a moment if nobody's seen it before. But that tying the knot is very, very Scottish. You won't get much. It's all sorts of things. I've done oath in stones. And if anyone's ever seen that at all, if you go back in time, people used to live where there was a source of water, a stream or a burn or a brook. And they would go and find a stone. They would take that stone out of that stream. And it would they would make an oath. That's where that set in stone really comes from. They set, they would make an oath on that stone. And in the past, they would then go back to that stream and they would cast that stone back to the elements. And that meant that the oath that they made on that stone is then going back into time and it would be there forever. So all these things, is drinking from quakes in Wales, they've got love spoons and it's all sorts of things. But hey, that's entirely up to you. Some people love that stuff, some people don't. It really is what you want to do. But what we're going to do at that meeting, remember, is just discuss the thing with you. Find out what makes you tick. That person, and I've said this already, that person is so important because they are the contact that you're going to have right forward. As it, in fact, I'll show you exactly how 
And girls, you, you two stand up for me just now, and I'll get this done here, because this is very, very simple. When you, imagine, imagine you, you're the guy, so you have your hands there, and on the day, remember, on the day, these hands are going to be all sweaty. <laughs> but it won't matter, I mean, but you get married anyway, okay? But what would happen is, what would happen is, this explained to all the guests what is happening. These, piece, these pieces of ribbon, you want to come over this way? Come over this way, girls. These pieces of ribbon are representing the families that they come from, but it also represents them as individuals. The ribbons are placed in their thumbs. It could be here. If there's children involved and older children, we can use children to do this. If it's parents or grandparents, we can use the grandparents to do this. Because what's happening is they are betrothing their love to each other, but also what they're doing is they're linking two families together. The two families are now being bound by these ribbons. If you put that in your thumb there, Mike, yes, if you don't mind. Yeah. What's happening is, what's happening is these ribbons are being put into the thumbs and being held by the thumbs, and in the families that they come from. But more importantly, it represents them as individuals as well. Now, if this family, if it's children, I like to involve because if a child old enough, I get the child to place that ribbon there. I'm telling everyone what this is symbol symbolizing. I'm explaining everything, and I talk a wee bit as well. Okay, so I'm. I'm in a way to all the guests, making sure they understand what's happening. I then ask them both, hold on to the ribbons you've got, leave each other's hands go, and then pull the ribbon towards yourself. Pull it tight in the middle, and what you've done is, you've put one arm above the other, like that. The photographer will have been told that this is happening. I've briefed the photographer up, I've briefed everyone there up to make sure they know everything's happening. That is now tied a knot, it's tied the two families together. But you've also, if there's children involved, we've got a ribbon there to represent the children. What happens, what practically happens with that usually with a couple, is they maybe frame that. They might put the, the date of their wedding and, the, and, the, and whatever the name's on it, and that would go on the wall in the house. So what you've actually done there is something that is ancient. It's tying the knot. As I said, quakes have been done. Believe it or not, I've done more modern stuff than that. You can have a seat, girls, honey. I've done much more modern things than that. I've done... Mixing of cocktails. Now that doesn't sound very Asian, does it? But I've done several of these things, and the idea is is to put every end of the cocktail into a mixer, and then relate each ingredient to what a marriage is going to be. Now the first one I ever did, I didn't put ice in first, but now when I do it, I put ice in first because it's not always warm in a marriage. Sometimes you don't like that first as much as you think you do, because that's what happens. That's what marriage is. But what the ingredients go in, then you, they will represent everything about the marriage, right from whatever it was. You could call it whatever you want as well, because I usually like to tell them, name the actual cocktail for whatever you want it to be called, and then that will carry through from your married life as well. So each anniversary, you could be mixing up a cocktail, and then you could be to toasting each other with that cocktail as well. I've had a bride walk around the groom, putting the groom in the centre of her circle. He wasn't getting out of that circle, because she was now creating a circle. So it, it could be anything at all. It really is down to you. And that's why it's important that you speak to the celebrant and then you get the celebrant that you want. There's a legal process to this as well, of course, because you're getting married. That legal process is very simple and your celebrant will talk you through that as well. Now, every legal form has got a number. If you haven't been on to any wedding websites yet, you will see M10s. That's what they call it because every legal form has got a number, an M10. It's a marriage notice. That marriage notice is what you were telling the registrar in the district that you're getting married. So it doesn't matter where you live. If you get married in the air, it'll be the Edinburgh registrar. If you get married in the air, it'll be the air registrar. The air registrar or whatever it is are going to create a marriage schedule. That's the piece of paper that you all sign on the day. Okay? That's what is going to end up in the records office in Edinburgh. It's going to sit there forever. So in future, if anyone has any doubt whether you were married, they can go get that. Because it has to be signed with black indelible ink so that the signatures don't fade. So when your great, great grandchildren are wondering who the hell you two were, they could go to the records office and have a look at that bit of paper. So it's just there forever. The whole idea, though, I'm going back to this, I've said it several times, it's the celebrant. That person that you've spoken to right at the start, the one that you've made the connection with, and I said, independent will we'll talk you through everything. Have a look at it. Go on to it. I would tell you, whoever you choose, go to anyone, whether you get married in the church, whether you get married in a synagogue, whether you get married in a... Book the person that you want. As soon as you've got your date, as soon as you've got your venue, 
book the person that you want because that person, and I said this several times, is the one that's going to take it right through to your wedding day. It's fabulous, guys, I'm telling you, because you can literally do what you want. If you're religious, you go down the religious route. But Scotland is one of only about eight countries in the whole world, believe it or not, that actually do this as a legal ceremony. And I think it's fabulous. I really do. It's fabulous because you can... Am I, am I okay for time yet? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> I've got, got to check. As yesterday was over time yet. <laughs> but seriously, the whole idea is to make sure that it's moulding that ceremony to what you want it to be. Now, we've got something like nine on 40 celebrants across Scotland, so in case something happens, now it's unlikely, it's only happened on a couple of occasions for us, where the, the celebrant that was going to be with them, the marriage officer, as we call them, the marriage officer, it was one with a, with a death on a Friday night of a mother, so somebody had to fill in on the Saturday. Now, it could be a Friday night where he gets knocked out by a bus. And if he gets knocked out by a bus, then you've got to get somebody else to come in. What we have in place is a drop box. Your ceremony, once it's been written by that celebrant, will end up in the drop box. It means that it can be pulled out by anybody in the organisation. So it means that if for any unknown reason, and the person that was doing your wedding on the Saturday, if they are not available, which is very rare, then they've got exactly the, the ceremony that you've moulded together with that celebrant. It might be somebody else delivering it, but you're having exactly what you've, you've planned for. So nothing is going to be there that's not going to be, that you don't want it. I've said it already. If you've got mention or children, grandparents, parents, if anyone's there that's playing bridesmaids, best men, anyone that's playing a role at your wedding, it's nice to give them a wee mention as well because they have an important part, remember. Because when you go to that wedding, all these guests are going to be there. They'll be friends, they'll be colleagues, but they'll also be family members. And it's nice to mention family members simply because they are a wee bit different to the rest. They're a wee bit more special than the rest. So it's nice to mention them. However, it's all about the couple. It's putting in on the couple. If they've got children, then we can include them. We can do things with the children as well. If a child wants to be in the arms of his mum or her mum, fine, absolutely not a problem. We allow whatever you want it to be. So there's no difficulty with anything at all. We also, now this is, I'm a non-believer. So I, 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 I just think this is the one life we have. We haven't got another one, it's not a rehearsal. So, but if you've got a mum or a granny or somebody that is religious and they want to go a blessing, fill your boots. It's not they should or shouldn't do. I am not going to do anything or me, me making me hypocritical. But it's not going to stop me from allowing you. I'll give you an example of that. I did a wedding, this is going back many, many years ago. And it was a lassie who was from an Asian background. Her mum was a Hindu. And her mum wasn't happy that she was going down this route. So I met with the mum, first of all, in a cafe in Glasgow. And if, if looks could have killed you, I wouldn't be here today. Because she wasn't happy that she was going down that route. In effect, what, the, what she did was, she got up on the day, she, made a, she put a garland around both their necks and then she did a blessing in a language that probably three quarters, if not more, didn't even know what she said. So what does it matter? If it means it's doing the right thing for you, if it means it's the right thing for your wedding, then that's exactly what we'll do. I hope, I hope that's made it clear because it is fabulous. I've said it several times. So it is fabulous because you can literally do two things only. Sign a bit of paper. Tell each other you're going to marry each other. Anyone going to We've got a stall up there, as I say, if you want to go and have a visit over and have a look. If there's four people on the stall, just know. But as I say, we've got people right across. I'm going to harp on a wee bit more, just, just slightly. You don't have to stick with the person that you meet, okay? Because say you decided you want me to come along, and I come along and had a chat with you. And at the end of the 30 minutes or whatever it is, you say, well, I don't like him anymore. Well, he can just send me away against somebody else. It's not a problem. It's not, it's not happened yet, okay? So, <laughs> but, but seriously, it means you're going to mold it. You're going to fix. It's a fix that you're going to have with that person. And I can't emphasize that enough. Once you've got your date, get somebody to marry you. And it's not the guy or girl or, or standing next to you. It's as simple as that. No questions? No? None at all? Have a fabulous day, girls, and if anyone's getting married, whichever one's getting married, have a wonderful life together as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.